everyone and welcome to The Noon Show. I'm your new host, Leah Chester, and I'm so excited to be here doing this today. As you might have... What's, what's going on? I'm in. Alright, I don't have a lot of time, alright? But what I really need to say is... Welcome to the Noon Show with your real host, Dario Tolentino. And as you can see, I've been robbed. What's happening to me is an injustice, and I will not stand for it. They cannot get rid of me. They can't. Unbelievable. That was extremely unprofessional. Someone is going to get annihilated. Rich, it was you, wasn't it? Using your engineering superpowers for evil? You know what? You're fired. Yep, you're fired. Take your things and go. And don't start crying, because it won't work. See you later. Unreal. We're, we're live. So sorry about that, everyone. As you might have noticed, my predecessor, Daryl Tolentino, seems to have forgotten that I have finally claimed my rightful throne as noon show host. He isn't here right now. He's currently down in Carolina with all his grass and chickens and neighbors who are probably weirdly obsessed with America, if you know what I mean. Which Carolina? North or South, I don't know, but I also don't really care. Enough about Daryl, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Lee Chester, and I'm a woman, which automatically makes me a million times cooler than him. I am Indo-Caribbean, Indo-Caribbean, so before you try to compare me to Lily Singh or Liza Koshi, don't. Being of Guyanese, Indo-Caribbean heritage summed up basically means that I eat chicken curry and roti while also listening to soca or reggae music. My incredible father is a pastor, and I myself am a Pentecostal Christian. So no, I do not publicly take part in any whining dance activities. At most, I'll shimmy my shoulder. One shoulder. Hi, Daddy and all our church friends. Uh, anyways, as the first host of the chaos of the year 2020, I felt a responsibility to talk about it, but I also don't really want to because I'm tired of talking about it. We're all really stressed out and desperately need a break. I sure could use one. Every Monday night at exactly 11 p.m. I sit on my bed and cry. Don't worry, I'm fine. God has blessed me with many talents which I am so grateful for. For example, I wanted this show to be as perfect as possible, so I hired the best crew I could find. Me, duh. I did every single crew position. I'm working all three cameras right now. I'm also monitoring my audio levels, but since my modulation is perfect, there's really not much to do. And I'm rolling the prompter as I speak. Faster prompter, please. I'm a woman of many talents. As you may have noticed, I am also wearing a mask, which is unfortunate because you can't fully see how incredibly beautiful I look right now. For reference though, here is the Mona Lea, which I painted from scratch all by myself because apparently I am the only one that is good at doing things around here. Speaking of incredible, powerful women, that's the theme of this noon show. We here at WRED-TV recognize the strength it takes to be a woman in all the cool things that we do. We are also dedicated to constantly improving. Interestingly enough, the number of men on our executive board has gone down with every year. Now, I'm not saying that there's a connection there, but also, now that I've gotten rid of Rich, who happens to be a man, I think we're on our way to being the best we've ever been, really. To touch on that, I'd also like to mention that sometimes men just cause a lot of emotional suffering. I'm sure we've all had our fair share of experiences with men who may have hurt us in one way or another. It happens. If it's ever happened to you, I have the perfect service for you, so make sure to stick around. Both of our guests today are amazing, talented women who I admire so much for the heart and passion that they put into their respective fields, and I am so excited to be able to talk with them. I will be interviewing Good Morning America celebrity makeup artist, Andrea Fairweather. <laughs> and also performing live in Studio 422 is St. John's University's Imani Ariel. <laughs> we will be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Have you ever had your heart broken by a boy? Think about it for a second. What am I saying? Of course you have. We've all been there. Anyways, 
If you find yourself in this position, I have the perfect service for you. Sometimes when people hurt us, our first instinct is, is revenge. And we want to hurt them the same way that they hurt us. And maybe you're thinking you should take the high ground, be the bigger person. But what's the point? Was he thinking of being the bigger person when he broke up with you over a text? No. So forget any sense of compassion that you may have for the boy that threw your relationship right down the drain and contact us at Hurt a Boy. Hurt a Boy is exactly what it sounds like. If you're looking for closure, figure it out. But if you're looking for revenge, we've got you covered. Here at Hurt a Boy, you give us as much information about that no longer special boy in your life, and we build our schedule around his to get back at him for you. We have our top of the line workers follow him around and make him absolutely miserable. Here at Hurt a Boy, we pride ourselves on three qualities. Effectiveness, subtlety, and sheer ruthlessness. God. Oh, thank you so much. No problem. Um, what's your name? Uh, Mark, what's your name? Oh, ew. Um, you know, you, you can keep it. Can I get a cappuccino with a espresso shot? Cappuccino with sauce? Oh, uh, grande. Robert Cappuccino with espresso. Yeah. Espresso, he looks tired. Espresso. <laughs> Ew, I used to talk to some guy that liked that team. Mm. I've never met anyone who liked that team. It wasn't one of the worst people I've ever met. Oof, I wonder if there's a correlation. Yeah. See, here at Herda Boy, we take the Hamlet approach. We don't go and hit this boy in one shot. We pile it on, little by little, and watch him unravel into his own descent into madness. But the thing is, he won't know about us. Wait, oh my god. We're, we're, I just had it here. I didn't have to print out paper in five minutes for a test. Oh, oh, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail this class. I gotta find the professor. It's not good, oh my god. Oh, I forgot my phone, oh my god. I, I, my phone too? Oh my. Now, you may be thinking, isn't that bullying? And for legal and ethical reasons? No. He'll just take a step back and realize that his life got so much worse without you in it. Naturally, he'll want to take you back and you can lay the final blow yourself. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Hey, listen, I know, I know you don't want to hear me from right now. I get that, I get that, but you gotta listen to me. I'm really sorry for what I did. I know I, I, I broke your heart, I know I did, but life has been way more miserable for me without you. I just want you back in my life, and uh... I just really miss you. I'm really sorry, I... Trust me, it works. So if shattering that boy's sense of self is what you want, contact us today. But after it's all done, remember, boys may hurt you from time to time, or you may think that some of them are the best things ever and that you absolutely need them. But I promise you that isn't true. After you ruin his life, remind yourself that you deserve nothing but the best treatment. And if you aren't being given that, then you might as well not be there. At the end of the day, nothing can truly replace the value of knowing your own worth. Well, now I know where to go for the next time that happens. Next up, I have a very special guest with me. Andrea Fairweather is a Brooklyn native makeup artist who has made her way around the industry working with high-end retail companies and eventually founding her own company, Fairweather Faces Incorporated, which caters to working mothers, professionals, celebrities, as well as anyone who just wants to get pampered. In 1998, she also became the first makeup artist of color to work as a key makeup artist for ABC News' Good Morning America. Her list of clients also extends to many well-known television personalities, such as Diane Sawyer, Elizabeth Vargas, Cynthia McFadden, and Deborah Norville. Thank you so much for being here today with me, Andrea. 
Hi, oh, we can see her. Thank you so much for being here with me today, virtually, to meet you. It's an honor. Um, so how, Thank you. How are, how are you doing? Honor, how's I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you, I'm honored as well. So thank you for oh, thank spotlighting you so much. me. I was so excited when I found out that I'd be able to interview you because you're such a huge part as a makeup artist in making the magic happen, whether it's film or TV. Um, you know, you're the person that makes everybody look good and I think that's so awesome. But you actually, before you became a professional makeup artist, you were actually acting and dancing yourself. Um, so was that your original dream? Yes, um, my original dream, um, because I went to the high school of performing arts, which is LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. And I also went to college for dance because I wasn't exactly certain if I would move into a dance company or um, go television, but I started to move more into the television realm and I wanted to fuse dance and acting together. So I figured that that would be my thing, that I, I would be a star in that way and it, it didn't turn out that way and i had to really do some soul searching as to what my passions were other than dance and acting and that's when the wheels started turning for me to start to think of becoming a makeup artist and then an entrepreneur yes that's that's very interesting um for me to hear too because i was also ever since i was younger i was very interested in acting but then when I started college and I started studying TV and now I'm here at Red TV, I realized that pr producing is also really cool. Um, my friends tell me I'm okay at it. Um, so it's, it's very interesting how um, your dreams can change, but they always change for the better sometimes. Um, so for you, when was, can you recall the exact moment you realized that you wanted to take on makeup artistry as a professional career? Yes, um, it actually, came in spurts so i um was injured very badly in a dance class and it's funny how the universe works because i you know was going through a few things but for it, it was so symbolic for it to happen on the dance floor because i lived in dance classes for, for a number of years daily and you know it was weird in that moment i knew that i wasn't going to dance in the same way um and not too long after that injury, while recovering from the injury, I, and this happened in college, I, the spirit told me to take a business management class. Mm -hmm. And that didn't make sense to me because I was in the arts and it wasn't in my curriculum at all. But I decided to listen and I took this class. And at the end of the class, the professor wanted us to come up with um, a new business model some business type that no one's never heard of before. And I just kind of threw it out there. And I said, well, and I was kind of flipping about it in a way too, like, eh, well, what if there was um, a team of artists that could travel to your location, any location you wanted, and they could provide on-site makeup, hand, nails, and massage therapy um, totally at your convenience. And I just like, bam, just put it out there and sat down. And then my professor walked up to me and said, she leaned in and said, if you could actually make that happen, you will be a genius. Mm -hmm. And it didn't leave, it took about a good five to seven years after that to actually implement it. The, the foundation of Fair Weather Faces because back in, when we launched, it was 1997, but I had the idea back in, the early 90s to do it. There just was no blueprint, no business model for me to actually do it. So it was from my frustrations. I was working as a freelance makeup artist in all the different New York City department stores. And it wasn't until I kind of just became frustrated and felt like, you know, I need to do something else still within makeup, but I need to get out there and do my own thing. And, you know, I remember walking off the floor. I announced that I was, you know, going to leave in a couple of weeks and I walked out of the door praying that I never would have to return again, that it would be a success and and it was. It really was. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's incredible how how things really just work out for the better. You think in one moment there's something that you want and then in another moment it's like, "Wait, like 
that that would also actually be really cool and, it, and everything kind of just works out for for the best um, and I'm sure as, as someone who loves makeup ever since I was younger I would go in my mom's stash and steal her makeup and she doesn't know until now um, <laughs> but I've also noticed growing up that like in you know makeup artistry is very much a serious business like there is a method to makeup you can't just throw things on and expect them to look good and I find that in recent years I would say maybe for about a decade now a lot of YouTube creators and Instagram artists self-proclaimed Instagram artists have come up with all these tips and tricks and hacks and I, it's very interesting to me to, to see that transition and to kind of try to duplicate that on myself as a real professional makeup artist who was licensed and studied this do you feel like that takes away so much from the real method and and the beauty and the art of makeup it's interesting that you say that because it's kind of like um two-tiered if if you will mm -hmm. um i have this conversation often with my colleagues about it um about how they feel how they view it and it's pretty um unanimous um for all of us in the sense of the first thing is social media is an amazing platform to be mm -hmm. able to get your information out there to be able to brand and promote yourself yourself or your company your products your skills so that's a good thing mm -hmm. but the other thing that happens with social media is it can build trends and the trends don't necessarily need to be truthful it's kind of like a rumor if something starts and people believe it then they think that that's what it is and so the funny thing with um, makeup, as it started developing and you had like all these um, uh, self-proclaimed makeup artists because they were really good at, some of them were quite gifted, frankly, to do makeup on themselves, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are an actual makeup artist that besides doing makeup beautifully on themselves, they have to be able to execute that um, on any other face. And that's where the difference comes in. So you can have a star on um, social media platforms that isn't technically a makeup artist, just because you can do your own face well, doesn't make you a makeup artist. It makes you a makeup aficionado, someone that is really passionate about it but you aren't educated in makeup. You just really like it and it's your passion. And so you put it forth on social media. The difference being a, a trained makeup artist that has put years into the craft of studying it, that is able to execute in all dimensions of makeup. If it's um, photo shoots, television, print, um, film, it's all different. It's all very, very different and a lot can't do that. And that's when it starts to weed out who can and who can't. So my colleagues and I feel that it's a wonderful platform to showcase um, yourself and your work, but to start doing these trends that you don't really know where they fall into, but it seems like the cool thing is the tricky part because the truth of the matter is that the majority of the tricks that are shown that keep moving as if it's the thing to do is are actually drag queen makeup tricks mm -hmm. that were from back in the day. And they were um, makeup tips that were, and tricks that were used on men to make them look like women. Mm -hmm. And so now those tricks and trends have come forth as if it should be used on all faces and that's not necessarily so that's why a lot of times you see the the contouring is very severe or the eyebrows look really really severe it's because it wasn't intended for a female face to wear it it was intended originally for a male face to wear it right. to make the male look female and so that's the big difference. And it's it's just kind of interesting that, you know, it's become this thing where all these tricks from the drag queen looks 
are now the looks that I see all these gorgeous girls in the streets and on the train wearing these severe eyebrows and, mm. you know, these contoured winged out lashes that just don't fit. It, it doesn't fit their faces because it wasn't intended for them to wear it. It was intended for a man to wear, to look female. Right. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That, that, that is very interesting how trends build and, and spread so quickly um, and people don't really take it into consideration. They kind of just, oh, that looks good on her, but on me, does it look good? Because um, everyone's right. face is so different. Um, so mm -hmm. as a real artist who has studied it for so long, do you have a personal philosophy about it? Because um, it's such an intricate art. Is there something in all of your work that you always have to implement? Yeah, I think over over the years, I think any artist tends to have their own style right. or their own um, way of, of doing things. And I find with me, the thing that I always go to is, and it, whether I'm working on females or I'm working on males, mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter. What I really try to do is create a a palette of skin that looks natural no matter what. That's the first thing. I'm very much into skin because I realize and I've always known that the on camera for my clients that if their skin is on point, they will deliver whatever they need to, whatever message, if it's an acting job or if it's um, a journalist position like yourself, it will elevate their confidence if their skin is on point. So I realize that. And then even with the men, I pay attention to their brows, to the facial hair grooming. For the women, it's brows, eyes, and lips. You know, very important, those key things. And then the rest can pretty much fly in terms of the contouring. Sometimes I do contour for men, but you really wouldn't be able to tell. It's just mm -hmm. in the blending. So um, Leah, it's really about, in the end, for anyone, even for myself, I'm still learning. I'm still practicing all the time. Um, the more you practice, the, you, the more you master anything. And makeup is defi definitely an art form that must be practiced. Yeah. And you try new things. You're always just stay open to, to trying new things um, as your own technique starts to build for you mm. stay open to learning and listening watching watching is very important um of your colleagues around you to see what they do how do they get to point a to point z you know just just seeing what it is because there's never really just one way to do things but a way will become your way at some point and that will end up being your formula to doing your art yeah so obviously many people have took note of your incredible work and the hard work that you've put into your art um, you are a key artist in good morning america at the moment um, you've worked with so many celebrities like diane sawyer amber rose sting kama harris um, so i have to ask how do you maintain a professional composure when surrounded by these people who are such icons does it ever feel intimidating yeah sometimes um i, I mean sometimes i lose it <laughs> <laughs> I like too. um uh i remember when um i remember when amber rose came yeah. in for example i don't know if you've ever seen her in person she's stunning yes. with no makeup on like i mean her skin was like dewy and cushiony and bouncy and even, it was gorgeous. And she walked in and she had like, you know, this, I think it was like more like a, like a platinum blonde that day, mm -hmm. really, really low to the scalp. These glasses, she walked in with this tight t-shirt and these jeans and she walked in and I couldn't help but go, 
what is this? Like, I mean, she was just so <laughs> stunning. And she was like, what do you mean? Like, she has a soft little baby voice. What do you mm-hmm. mean? And I was like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, is this body for real? Like, you are just <laughs> stunning. Get in my chair. Let me work on you. Like, sometimes I have that, you know, first reaction with folks where it, it feels like some people say to me, you talk to them like you've known them all along. I just I just move by the spirit. If I feel that their spirit, spirit will allow me to greet them in that manner, then I let it rip. But, um, and I don't do it all the time, but most times I'm, you know, because it's so early in the morning, you know, you want them to um, feel like their spirit is being lifted up because they have to go out there and deliver. And it's really, really early in the morning. So, you know, or other times I'm quiet. If I see that they are a bit distant and they may not receive it, then I'm quiet. I just, and you know, and that does happen. Like, um, I remember it was Bernie Sanders came in and he was a bit distant at first, but I was able to warm him up. And after a while he was very chit chatty, but not at first. So you just have to kind of like read the energy. I remember I went crazy when, um, Miss Universe came in crazy. Like we started singing the song from coming to America, She's Your Queen. And she was just cracking up and laughing, but we had to give her her flowers because she was just so amazing and stunning and poised that I had to tell her, I think you are a queen. So please sit in my chair and let me bless you with my art. And she graciously accepted and allowed me to do my thing. So, you know, we it's it's a wonderful, exciting um, life to be yeah. able to do your art and get paid for it, but also to be able to exchange um, with all these different talents and energies. It's, um, it's pretty priceless and most times I can't even you know, understand how the universe has blessed me so much to be able to have fun at work because a lot of folks don't really like their jobs, but I can actually say that I love my job and I love my clients and I I appreciate them and I truly appreciate that they trust me to be able to get them ready to deliver their job. Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Andrea. It was such a pleasure to have you here. Hopefully, You're God willing, welcome. one day I would love to have you as my personal makeup artist. Maybe. Oh, of course. Well, we're going to put that out there in the universe right <laughs> yes, now. You absolutely. And when you do, you call me because I would love to work with you. I would love that. Absolutely. I will. Thank you so much, Andrea. It was an honor to virtually meet you today to talk about your incredible work. Be sure to follow Andrea on Instagram at Fairweather Faces, as well as her website, fairweatherfaces.com, to check out all her work and products. Next up, we have a special performance from up-and-coming artist Imani Ariel. Imani is one of our very own Johnnies who has been working on enriching not only her education, but her craft as well. She creates touching music that tap into something truly personal and enchanting. This week, Imani joined us for an exclusive look at her new song and a quick interview. It's kind of feeling like a chore If you don't want to be here Then baby, there's the door See, you can't walk away Cause it's hard to ignore Your heart needs healing And you know I got the cure Vibe don't hit the same When you're hiding all your pain There's no need to explain I'm trying to stay in my lane Stay in my lane Damn, I'm going insane, going insane I'll give you all of my attention When you're talking, I'll just listen here To show you something different Your mind is my favorite place to visit I 
come with good intentions, baby. I just wanna kick it. I just wanna kick it. I just wanna kick it, baby. I just wanna kick it. I just wanna kick it, baby. My heart's doing 105 in a fast lane. But baby, it's not a race I'ma let you set the pace So you can get a little taste Of what you've been waiting for Tell me what you're waiting for It's worth waiting for I don't need to say no more mm -hmm. But baby, let's proceed I know you like to smoke weed But I'm the only drug you need Get addicted like nicotine And prescribe me like promethazine I'm trying to tell you I'm a different breed Different breed if the feeling's right, let's stop wasting time I'll give you all of my attention When you're talking, I'll just listen here to show you something different Your mind is my favorite place to visit I come with good intentions I just wanna kick it, baby That was a beautiful performance. Now Imani will join me for a few quick questions. Thank you so much for being here, Imani. That was beautiful. Your song, Wanna Kick It, out Thank on you. Spotify you. and YouTube. Um, so I'm curious, how would you personally describe your sound and where would you say that you draw the most influence from? Um, well, the genre I'm singing is mostly R&B, um, but I don't want to limit myself to one sound. I feel like I want to be able to provide a versatile, uh, like an arrange of music when it comes to uh, singing. I don't want to limit myself. Um, my influences are Mary J. Blige, uh, Kehlani, Janae Aiko, um, Summer Walker, those kind of artists. <laughs> yes, all incredible artists. I love those. Um, so if you could collaborate with any artist, dead or alive, who would you pick? Um, I would have to say Mary J. Blige. Yes. <laughs> Only because like she, I grew up listening to her music and she's had the most influence on me since I was little. Mm. And it would really be an honor to be on the, the same track as her. <laughs> yeah, so you actually do have a lot of musical influence in your personal life as well, in your household, right? Um, so I'm curious though, um, for you specifically, what was the moment that you sat down and you realized like, wow, I can like sing and I could like actually make a career out of this if I wanted to as well? I didn't actually think of pursuing a career in music, like making my own music until quarantine. So that was like a couple oh. months ago, <laughs> not yeah. that long ago. Um, I've always sang, but I thought it was more of like a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like I'm, I'm good at it, but I didn't think like I could really make it as a singer. Mm -hmm. Um, quarantine kind of forced me to sit down and actually write some of my own music and really give it a shot. And here I am making music now nice. <laughs> and I dropped my first single. So that's the you know first step. Yes, ma'am. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. I'm also curious, because you're a student, we're mm -hmm. all students here, so we know what being a student is like. How do you balance your school life with trying to boost your music career? Um, well, school comes first. Yes. Um, I want to graduate. I like to finish what I start, so I definitely am going to graduate regardless of what happens with my music, yes. but I'm always going to make music a priority as well because that's just something that I love to do. And um, whether I'm in school or not, um, music is always going to be 
be a essential for me. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Imani. That thank you for having performance, me. Of course, the performance was incredible. Thank be you. sure to keep up with her on Instagram at Imani Ariel and check out her latest song, Wanna Kick It, out on Spotify and YouTube. Now back to the studio. Special thanks again to Imani for joining us this week. And of course, once again, thank you, Andrea. It's been great having you here with us. Make sure you all keep up with these lovely ladies. We can't wait to see the amazing work they continue to put out. Thank you for watching The Noon Show. Be sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter using the links below to keep up to date with WRD TV and find out how you can be a part of our production. I'm Leah Chester. Have a wonderful weekend.